to ask. Yeah. Uh, I did ask Councillor uh, Crabtree and Harry Smith about the uh, children's play area in Gorby Road, Clifton, yeah. uh, about it being locked all the time and two children nearly drowned in the lake at the back on the opposite side. And he told me I had to ask when I come here. Very good. Now you've asked it. Do you think you can actually give an answer? Can you do that? It's locked, it's padlocked. It is, yes, but the play, play area that you're walking into the whole thing, the play centre, is open. <coughs> it's, the, it's the area outside where they go up and, you know, we're joking yes. up. That's not open. I passed it again today, yesterday I passed it, and it's all padlocked. Yeah. We'll, we'll come to them when they're in the park. I, I was down there, Simon got checked for something yesterday, and it was open. And the play area goes through the children's play area. We'll come to them as you pass Walkie Road. Question um, it's concerning my um, a blue badge outside my home. I have a, a okay. dis disabled. Oh. Well, the, the um, United Utilities came last week and they dug part of it up because there was a leak and it was all boarded off and everything. And it's gone all down. And, and the gentleman from United Utilities said I have to get in touch with somebody to have it repainted. I did get in touch on the telephone to say, as the United Utilities had been out, and they said they'd sent somebody round, and as far as they were concerned, it, it will do for the time being. Sorry. Right. Um, I think from now on, what we're going to have is it's pretty good to have questions, but unless we have them beforehand, we might not get answers. Though they're immensely more for the individuals, they may not be a burning issue for anybody else.
will and never want to do that. But, I mean, it says there are men who put up in London for seven years and it's okay. Now, during that seven years, we had a census. We could have got hold of lots more people that were struggling, more uh, DNA residents, more teenagers. We've got different policies. We've had a rural recession. We've got a food bank. Now, all that must be changed in the policy. Uh, 
majority party can form the leader that is actually based on state And then on the wall basis, when it reaches 25 and 50 or so, we will form the wall council so they can do something. But we are actually trying to counter uh, the uh, individuals if they can chuck their rubbish all over the town. I don't agree with this. It is real progress. Through you, Chair, we, uh, we certainly will do. I guess just in terms of time, at this stage, we've issued those and we're about to start, you know, in about a month or so, it's time we'll record the CD. So it will certainly be possible to say in three months' time, it will be certainly possible for us to give a retrospective report around, uh, around some of those issues at a, at a later date when we've got a clear picture. Right. So can we, could we actually request to the committee that each one of us would be a great deal of as part of our agenda for these meetings? Uh, the numbers issued, uh, the numbers paid, the numbers in court. <coughs> the starting date, the finishing date, but it helps us to see what progress can be delayed. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It's going to come, that's going to come up. The second item, Mark, thank you for that report. Um, the second is that we twice requested from the council committee the contract. I'm anxious that we, we see whether we can put onto the website uh, so that any resident can look up uh, what the service is for their area, what we as um, council taxpayers actually pay for this. Uh, and it would have helped us enormously had we had some sort of response rather than just trying to shut the door. Uh, it would help us plan the next stage, because we're not waiting for you, to be honest with you. Uh, I'm certainly fed up uh, in trying to get this information out of the council. Um, so, so, sorry, Chair, yeah, just to yeah. respond on that, I said, hey, um, it's common that people want to see the detail of the contract that we have, for example, with Bitter or any other provider. Um, obviously, aside with the commercial aspects and intended rates, it's a document that's freely available Surely in practical terms, because the size of it is a fairly unwieldy document, typically when people want to see, for example, the uh, bit of contract, uh, we invite people into Cheshire Lines, the contract is there for people to view, to, to just come and have a look at. And I get you, Mark, I get you more worried about these answers. Because if I was, I'm not a council here, if I was actually in council and sent this document this time, I would specifically want to know what the street in my road is getting. There surely is a summary which actually says before the council votes to these contracts, this is what the contract's going to guarantee for various areas. Now, I, okay, it's the third, I said, fair what we say, this is the third time of asking. So, yeah, you each have I'll have to give you a you, Chair, with your permission, I'll give you a direct answer on that, that's okay. Yeah. The contract we have with Biffa, in, uh, in very broad terms, it's uh, an output based specification. So the contractor has a requirement to keep certain standards of litter and cleanliness across the board. In addition to that, uh, over the past 12 months, we've then moved to, in residential areas, there is a specific frequency basis for cleansing, and the way that we communicate that to the public on the council's website, as I understand, uh, there is clear street cleansing schedules of um, all of the residential streets 
uh, within this constituency community area, residents can go on and they can actually see the, the frequency of the data that they get. Mark, with, with respect, I'm not concerned about what you're doing. We've actually specifically asked for information uh, for more detailed information. However, we're the way to take this place in the bus.